I feel like it's getting increasingly more and more rare to get a product in 2025 that not only is functional and serves a purpose, but is also cool just for the fact and for coolness sake. And that's exactly what this Wokiest Retro Docking Station is. It'll essentially turn your M4 Mac Mini into a retro style Mac from the 1980s, and it's going to be a high-end 13-in-1 docking station. And not only that, it has a built-in 5-inch display, so does that mean that you can kind of take your Mac Mini on the go with this thing? We're going to unbox this, see what it's all about, and see if it's finally worth the hype, and if it deserves a spot on the desk. Let's get into it. So now, before we set this up, let's get this thing unboxed and see what we're getting ourselves into, because again, this is essentially going to turn your M4 Mac Mini into a retro docking station. And again, it's for the M4 and the M4 Pro Mac Mini. And they have two versions. I think they have a 10 gigabit per second one and then an 80 gigabit per second one. And then it gives you 13 total different ports, right? So you have a USB-C for the host, a USB-C for power in, four USB-A ports, a headphone jack, an SSD slot, which is crazy for NVMe. You have another USB-C port in the front, HDMI in, micro and micro SD card, and then finally a five inch display, which I'm curious to know what that's gonna look like, what the resolution is, if it's going to be like just a regular display, like an HDMI out or USB out display, or if it's gonna be like a diagnostic display. I'm going in kind of blind with you guys here to see what this is all about. So we're gonna get our first impressions and see if it's worth it. I do believe that the early bird special, because this is on Kickstarter, I believe it's going to be $99, which again, if it's doing everything that it's saying it's doing and has a display, that could be a win for most people. Because I know that most docking stations, you know, high-end ones can go two, three, four hundred dollars But let's open this thing up. You got the user manual, very self-explanatory, how to set it up, the connectivity. And I just kind of want to see what this thing looks like because I'm very, very curious to see how they put this together. I've seen a lot of people, you know, on YouTube 3D print stuff like this kind of in general where they maybe take an iPad mini and a Mac mini, combine them into one sort of 3D printed casing, and then they turn it into a retro style Mac, but this thing is crazy. I mean, look at this thing. So again, on the front, you do have the display, you have the retro rainbow colors. Obviously, they're not going to put an Apple logo there because they probably can't. Then you have two USB A's, you have micro SD and SD card slot, USB C over here. And if I turn this over, you also have two more USB-A ports, which are 10 GBBS per. You have an HDMI in, two USB-C ports, a headphone jack, and then in here, I'm assuming is where you have either the NVMe slot or what's going on in here. Yep, this is to be able to screw in your SSD if you have one, an external one, which is great to see. And then down here, does this open? We got a loose screw that just came out. But, oh, okay, so this is where all the Mac Mini stuff will live. So down here, is where the Mac Mini cutout is gonna be. And then you have all maybe your cables and stuff. Let's put this off to the side. Yep, it does include a nice USB-C to USB-C cable. I don't believe it's Thunderbolt, but probably high enough obviously to push power. Then you have this guy, which is probably for the actual SSD itself. And then it does also bring a regular USB-C to USB-C cable. And then I'm guessing this screw that was loose is to actually input the NVMe storage, which even has some nice um, cooling pads as well. And you even have your flathead screwdriver. So you get everything that you need in the box, except for, of course, the Mac Mini, but still very cool. I mean, look how cute this thing is. It's small, it's compact. I mean, here it is next to my face. So now let's set this up and see how it runs with the Mac Mini. Well, all right, everyone, we have the M4 Mac Mini right here, and we're gonna set this up, and we're gonna act as if this display right here is the only display, and then maybe we'll connect it to my actual monitor in my actual desk setup, to see what that all looks like and see how well that works and see what kind of functions we have. But let's kind of do this all at once. So I read the instructions. You're gonna to wanna to use this cable right here to connect the Mac mini to the display itself. So we should just be able to put this on top like this. It should fit, ooh, that fits very snug. Almost to the point where like you could pick it up on its own. But you can see you still have access to your USB-C ports and your auxiliary port. On the rear, you also have access to all of your USB-C and power and Ethernet and HDMI, so it doesn't block anything. Obviously, it's gonna keep it off the ground. There is some perforations here to allow for cooling. We'll see how well that works over time. But I mean, this is a beautiful little package. Look at this thing. It's still pretty lightweight, honestly, too, which is cool to see. But let's place this down. And the first thing it's gonna want you to do is actually plug this in. So we're gonna do the host, and we'll plug this in to the actual Mac Mini. Let's actually plug in the Mac Mini first and see if the Mac Mini can supply enough power to turn this thing on. And just to note, when this is being used with the Mac Mini, this bottom plate, not needed at all. 
And then keep it in here because you can technically use this as a secondary display or regular hub with a laptop or with a PC. Again, it's just kind of built for the Mac Mini as a kind of physical piece to put on top of it. But right now I have the Mac Mini plugged in and then to actually turn it on, this is gonna be the iffy part. You still have to kind of like reach underneath. It is very lightweight, so it's not that big of a deal. So the Mac Mini did turn on. Let's see if it actually turns on the display here though. I'm curious to see if it does. Oh, that is sick. So it looks like you don't absolutely need its own power source. That's hilarious. Look at this thing. Look at how small that is. So let's take this off. Now we are dealing with a five inch display, which I mean, nothing crazy. And I believe it's just a regular IPS panel. And those splotches are just the color of my wallpaper. But let's actually type in, let me get my keyboard and see how we can do this. So we have the Mac mini right here. We're gonna type the password in real quick. See if we can get in here. It's loading up. Cause again, we did have to restart the Mac mini. But this is hilarious. I mean, I cannot believe that it's working. It's running off the power of the Mac mini itself. But this is a My Mac mini desktop in this beautiful little kind of, I don't even know if this is 3D printed or not, but like I said, you do have all your ports right here. And this is perfect because I did just switch up to a, a real camera that uses SD cards. So I can now use this SD card reader to kind of import and move stuff around. But this has to be one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I mean, there's no latency, everything works. Obviously this is tiny. And the next thing I wanna do is actually set it up alongside my actual main monitor because that's how it's supposed to be used. So let's actually do that really quickly. But that is how you set it up. Very simple solution, very self-explanatory. And let's actually set it up in the desk setup. So I finally have the Wokius Retro USB-C hub installed on my main desk and I have it set up and it was very easy to set up. So as you saw when we initially got it set up when I was just using that one display as the main display, all you have to do is make sure you're plugged into power to the actual Mac mini use that short USB-C to USB-C cable to be able to push out video as well as audio from the Mac mini to the five inch display. And then also just the same way that you would connect it via the rear USB-C ports to an external monitor and that as well. So it's being treated by the Mac OS operating system as just a normal secondary display. You just have to make sure you create your main display as your bigger, larger display. I'm using a BenQ 5K monitor as my main display, and then the side display is going to be the Wookiee's retro 5-inch like LCD panel that's built in there. So again, very self-explanatory, very easy to use. And for me, it just adds a bunch of external ports that I was missing. For example, like I mentioned, I did just pick up a Sony camera, so I will be using SD cards for my main A-roll from the time being, so I need an SD card reader. While I do have some SD card readers laying around and things like that, it is nice to have a built-in hub that's really just sitting at my desk right in front of me that I can plug in and then remove however I see fit without having to use dongles or anything extra. So you do get that micro SD and regular SD card slot. And then also, like I mentioned with the version that I have, this is the $99 early bird version. So I do have the 10 Gbps kind of transfer speeds. So I have two USB A ports that give me that speed and then a USB C port on the front in order to get me that speed. And on the rear, you have an additional two USB-A ports with those same transfer speeds, the USB-C host port, like I mentioned, another USB-C for power input if you need to add power input, which again, you do not need to. I'm not 100% sure why the instructions are suggesting that. The power from the Mac mini itself is enough power to power the actual display on the retro hub. And then you do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And then finally that SSD enclosure, like I mentioned earlier, which does allow you to do those same 10 Gbps with up to eight terabytes of external storage. And then finally, they do have a more expensive version, which I believe is twice the price. And the biggest difference there is going to be just more high-end IO. The main higher end thing that's happening here is that you're going from 10 Gbps to 80 Gbps, which is much faster than that. Of course, you still get the same ports on the front. So you get your SD card reader, your micro SD, your two USB-A ports, your USB-C port. But on the rear, you do get a 8K 60 Hz DisplayPort 2.1, which is an upgrade to the HDMI port. You also get, like I said, that SSD enclosure, which is instead of 10 Gbps, it moves over to 80 Gbps. And then you still have the other ports, which still defer or default to the 10 Gbps. So if you want the ultra high speed SSD enclosure, this $200 one is the way to go. But if you're like me and you're fine with the kind of slower, even though they are fast enough in my opinion, then go with the early bird $100 special. And again, for 100 bucks, you get a 13 in one USB-C hub as well as a display that looks cool, is a conversation starter. And in theory, you can kind of bring it with you wherever you want. I did mess around with it as my only display here at this kind of recording desk. And while be it, it is pretty tiny. You can change the resolution a little bit to enlarge everything and make it a little bit more usable if you are in a situation where you do just wanna bring that with you as a quick little portable display. But again, that's gonna be the Wokius Retro USB-C hub. It is on Kickstarter right now. I'll leave a link down below. 
They did send this over to me to test out to try out, but they're seeing this review at the same time that you're seeing it. So again, they have no say on what's going on in this review. And overall, it's overwhelmingly positive. Everything works as intended. Everything works at the correct speeds. It plugged in directly the way that I wanted to, and it just looks great. And it's again, very rare to see something that is functional, but then also very cool just for the sake of being cool at the same time here in 2025. And I think that's what's gonna be happening here with accessories moving forward, where everything is getting a little bit commoditized in terms of what things can do with transfer speeds, USB-C ports, batteries, MagSafe, everything is getting a lot more standardized and making it a lot easier to actually get stuff done. So now instead of it being a functional thing, now we're gonna be meshing that function and the actual look and aesthetic and just what people enjoy seeing and using. And that's what I'm learning more and more here in 2025. So again, I'm excited to use this thing. Maybe I'll do a six month later review down the line, so definitely get subscribed. If you guys do enjoy videos like this one, definitely consider subscribing to the channel because it motivates us to make more videos like this. But if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below. Leave a comment if you guys would use something like this, if you think $100 is fair. And finally, I am curious to see what the retail pricing on this thing is gonna be. I'm sure it'll be on their Kickstarter website to see how much you're saving, but I can see it being maybe like $150 to $200 for the entry level one and maybe $300 for the kind of higher end one once it does hit retail. But that'll do it, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. If you wanna watch more videos like this one, check out one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.